Hello everyone and welcome to kind of the first official machine learning tutorial where we're actually going to be writing code and reading in data. So in this video essentially we're going to be uh, getting a big data set and we're going to be uh, minimizing that data set to use the valuable information out of it which is very important and is honestly probably the hardest thing with machine learning is getting your data in the right form and using uh, proper and valid data. And then we're going to be uh, actually in the next video implementing it's called the linear regression algorithm to predict grades based on kind of student behavior and student past grades. So that's a data set we're going to be using. It's actually what I have open here, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. But before I move into all of that, I just want to say that if you'd like to follow along with the tutorials and see all of the code, have all of the data, uh, go to my website, techwithtim.net. If you go to the tutorials page here, you will see, I, I know you don't see it right now, but there'll be a little box here that says machine learning with Python. And if you click on that, you'll find the tutorial series and you could go through and it's going to have all the code, all of the data, uh, everything that I write and kind of some descriptions as well. It's not going to be as extensive as the video, um, but just in case you want to get all the code and stuff, it'll be on the website. So I recommend that you follow along with that. And that's going to be for the future of all of these machine learning videos as well. Okay. So back to our data. Now with machine learning, data is obviously the most important part by far. Now the algorithms are actually fairly easy to implement, but we have to implement them on certain data and our data has to be in a correct form in a correct shape and it has to be well valid data like it has to make sense right so essentially what i'm doing is i'm just going to download a data set off of this uci machine learning repository website and they have a ton a ton of ton of data sets so i just picked this one because i thought it was kind of interesting uh student performance data set and essentially you guys can read the data set information this link will be in the description and on my website as well and it goes through uh, a bunch of things and I want to walk through them with you so that if you want to pick your own data sets off the website, you kind of know how to do that and what all these different things mean. So probably uh, some of the more important things, I guess, actually, I'm just going to read through them all and I guess I'll talk about them as we go. So data set characteristics here, and it'll show you these all on the main page when you select uh, data sets as well. Multivariative just means it has, uh, I believe, more than two variables. So you don't just have like one variable corresponding to the other one. Uh, there's a ton of different attributes that will apply to a certain label or classification. Uh, characteristics, don't worry about that attribute characteristics. That's actually incorrect. But um, associated tasks, classification, regression, um, this is just what it's good for. Typically, you can obviously use this data set with other kind of algorithms, but that's what it recommends. Number of instances is uh, how many instances are like people or in this case students are actually in the data set number of attributes is how many attributes for every single instance okay quick side note uh if you guys hear me like coughing or notice i'm a little bit uh not as good as i usually am i am a little sick right now so if you notice my voice a little raspy please excuse me so data set information essentially uh this is good to read kind of tells you how they got the data what it's from um it's not crazy important but i mean it kind of tells you what all these attributes are meant for and then attribute information, uh, this is like each property of a student, right? Or attribute is obviously the best way to say it. And it'll go through what the name of the attribute is and then all of the different values that could be associated with that. So for us, we're going to want to deal with integer attributes. So already anything that says like male, female, like we don't want to use these um, because unless we're going to transfer them, transfer them into like a zero or a one, uh, just because it's going to be more difficult uh, later on. Uh, there's stuff like study time, failures, like you can read through these and see what they all are. And each data set will have attribute information typically. The most important attributes for us in this data set are going to be the grades. So grade one, grade two, and grade three. Uh, and pretty much we could just use these two grades to predict what a final grade would be. Um, and that would give us a fairly accurate result. But I want to mix in some of these other attributes as well and see what we can uh, do with them. Okay. So that's the data that we're going to be using to download that. Go to data folder go to student.zip. It'll download the zip for you. I already have it downloaded, so I'm not going to do that. And then when you open up the zip, uh, let's go to my downloads here. Uh, it'll look something like this. Click on student mat and then just drag that into whatever directory you're working in. Okay. Because you can use this Portuguese one. It'll be the exact same process except hyphen POR instead of mat when you were importing it. Um, but this is just a math class. This is a Portuguese class. I like the math class better personally. So uh, that's what I'm going to use. Okay. So now that we are actually, we're in Python, so I'm in uh, what you call this here, PyCharm. We're actually going to need to just set up a few things before we can actually start importing our data. So in the last tutorial, I uh, installed some packages. Uh, we need to actually install some more packages that I forgot about. So excuse me for that. But essentially, we're going to activate our environment again to a fresh reminder. 
we can just do activate and then in my case I called mine tensor so we're gonna do that and I've already done that you can see I buy because I have tensor right here and then we're gonna install some packages so the first one we need to install is uh, pip install sk learn so I already have it installed but um, run through that we'll take a second we also need to install numpy and pandas so we're gonna install pandas this is gonna allow us just to read in our data frames really easily um, or data sets, sorry, not frames. I think I keep calling it frames. Anyways, uh, we'll do pip install numpy as well. This is just a allows for arrays because all the stuff we do actually needs arrays, not lists. And Python doesn't have uh, general support for arrays, okay? So once we have those installed, we can close this terminal. And by the way, you could have done this from the command prompt as well. Uh, just by running the terminal, it just runs it in the main directory that you're already in. So I don't know, I just do that because it's easier in PyCharm, but yeah. Okay, so first thing we need to do is read in our data sets. You can see I already have mine here. So to do this, we're going to say data equals uh, pandas. And I think I actually re brought that in as PD. So just copy these import statements here. PD dot read CSV. And of course, that didn't work. Okay, and we'll, we'll just do student hyphen mat dot CSV. Okay, so it's going to read in all our data. And since if you actually open this up here and I have it open here, you can see that all of our attributes are actually uh, separated by semicolons. Now, I don't know why they do this because well, CSV file stands for comma separated values. But to deal with this, we're just going to have to type uh, SEP equals and this just stands for separator or delimiter. We're going to do semicolon. OK, and that's what each attribute is separated by so that when we read in our data into a uh, pandas data frame, which is what this is actually going to be called here. Uh, it gets the correct values. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to set up or we're going to actually trim this data down to what we want it to be or what we need. Okay, so essentially you saw we had those 33 attributes. I don't want all those 33 attributes. I only want to use some of them. Now you guys feel free and please, I encourage you to do this. Mess around with the different attributes that uh, you're using. If you want to just test it out, use the same ones as me first, but then add some of your own, remove some, see if you can get your accuracy level up by using different ones, maybe even use them all. You know what I mean? See what uh, you can really do with them. Okay. But essentially what we're going to do here is I'm going to say something called X, uh, actually, no, we're going to say data equals data. Okay. And then in here, we're going to put a, another little list thing, and we're just going to type in the attributes that we actually want. So in this case, I'm going to do G1, uh, G2 g3 uh, I'm gonna do study time okay and what else should we do let's say here study time and I'm just gonna look them out of the screen here see what else we had oh absences and failures okay and these are you can see the list of attributes obviously if you go to that website that I was showing you unfortunately I closed it um, and then you can see what all of them actually mean. Try to pick ones that only have integer values associated with them because it'll make your life a bit easier. But if you, for some reason, pick one that doesn't have an, uh, a value, integer value, you're going to have to change all of the values within this data frame so that they're integer, uh, so they can actually work with the thing that we're going to be using. Okay. All right. So these are our attributes. And, you know, I'm actually just going to show you what our data frame looks like when we print it out because I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, so if you do data.head, this is going to grab the first five elements of our data frame and print them out to the screen and just show us what they look like. So before I change and manipulate the data, I'm just going to print the head out here. So I'll just run this quickly. I already have a configuration set up. And you can see that it's showing us all these different attributes. Can't show us all of them because there's not enough room in the console. Uh, and then what their values actually are equal to. Okay. And that's kind of what our uh, data frame looks like. And then if I want to, I can copy this and well paste this down here and you can see what the difference is now with our data frame. Uh, so you can see we've cut down from five by 33 columns to, uh, it doesn't say, does it? Well, it, <laughs> anyways, uh, we've cut down to however many attributes this is, which is six, okay? So now we're going to define what we are trying to predict. So what value is it that we actually want? In this case, we want G3 and G3 stands for their final grade. So we're going to do predict equals and then just in this case, we're going to type the attribute name, which is G3. And this is where I'm now going to go into talking about attributes and labels. Let's see what time we're at. Nine minutes. Okay, we'll go for another few minutes before I cut and go to the next video. But essentially, uh, everything here is known as an attribute, right? It's part of a student. Um, and it's unique to each student, like these attributes, right? And labels are what we want to um, get based on attributes. So in this case, our label is actually going to be known as G3 because based on all these different attributes, we want to determine what G3 is. 
Now, yes, I know I have G3 in here and it is still an attribute, but we're gonna remove that when we um, are actually testing and training this data set, okay? So this uh, predict is also known as a label. You may hear people say that. Uh, and essentially label is what you're trying to get, right? What you're looking for. And you can have multiple labels and you can predict multiple labels and you can also predict, uh, what do you call it? You can have like a ton of different attributes. You can have one attribute. It's, it's uh, you can change it around. It's all variable, okay? So now that we've done that, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna set up two arrays and one array is gonna define all of our attributes and one is gonna be our label or labels if we had multiple. So in this case, I'm gonna say X is equal to, and I think we're gonna do NP dot array. So we're gonna set this up in array because that's what we're gonna have to use. And we're gonna actually just do data dot drop. And in this case, I think this is what you do for it at least. We're gonna drop G3. So essentially what this actually does for us, and actually I need to do this, I think, based on what I'm looking at here. So G3, but we can actually just use predict. So this is more uh, optimized if we're gonna change what we're trying to predict. But essentially what we're doing here, right, is this is gonna return to us a new data frame. And these are what these are all called, right? Um, that just doesn't have G3 in it. Cause this is gonna be all our training data. And then based on that training data, we're gonna to try to predict like another value, right? Okay, so X and then Y is gonna be all of our labels, whereas this is all of our features or attributes, okay? So what we're gonna do now is gonna do mp.array. And then here we're just gonna go data. And what do we need for data? We're just gonna do data and then predict in here because we only care about the uh, actual G3 value here, okay? Now let me just check, yeah, that is correct, okay? So we're gonna do that, X and Y. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to uh, split these up into four variables. We're gonna have X test, Y test, X train, and Y train, okay? And not in that order, but uh, you'll see in a second. So we're gonna do X underscore train, uh, Y underscore train, not equals or greater than sign or whatever that is and we'll have x underscore test and y underscore test and this is going to be equal to uh how do you, what is this command sk learn dot linear model uh, or model selection actually dot train test split so it's giving me all those um which is very nice and in this case what we're going to pass we're going to pass x y and then for what is this value actually called just got to have a look at my other screen test size. This is what it is. Test underscore size is equal to 0 0.1. Okay, so let's talk about what this is doing. Essentially, we're taking our uh, all of our attributes and all of our labels or whatever we're trying to predict. And we're going to split them up now into four different arrays. So we have X train and Y train. Now X train is going to be a section of this array. Y train is going to be a section of this array. And then we're going to have these test data that we're going to use to test the accuracy of our model that we're going to create or of our algorithm. All right. Now, the way this works essentially is because if we trained the model off of every single bit of data that we have, and then it would simply just memorize patterns, right? Because computers can memorize things like amazingly. So think about it um, kind of in a way, say like you're in class, right? And uh, actually, okay, that's a bad example. Let, let's just say this, right? If we train the model off of the data we're gonna test it on, it's already seen that information. So it already knows what the answer to that question is or, or to that prediction. So we can't train the model off of our testing data. Otherwise, we're gonna get inaccurate results because it's gonna be able to pretty well get perfect because it's already seen that information. So essentially what this does is we're splitting up 10% of our uh, data into test samples so that when we test, we can test off of that um, and it's never seen that information before. Hope that makes sense to you. And this is just what this whole mess of code is doing for us, all right? Uh, test size and then X and Y is just taking our labels and features or attributes or whatever, okay? And I think I'm actually gonna cut the video here. In the next video, we're gonna go into actually applying this into an algorithm, talking about how that algorithm works mathematically. Uh, and then maybe, I'm not sure if it'll be in the next video or the one after that, we'll do predictions and so on with that, okay? So if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. And if you want exclusive updates on when the next machine learning videos are coming out, make sure to follow my Twitter, Tech with Tim, because uh, that's where I'm gonna be posting pretty much all the information for this. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.